Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today regarding the proposed bylaw changes brought forward by Jacob Knight on behalf of the Governance Working Group. My name is Tiffany Gonzalez, and I'm the current president of Glucuo. The purpose of this webinar is to provide an opportunity for members to learn more about the proposed bylaw changes specifically related to the Glucuo leadership, as, as it is our hope for members to learn more about the proposal, ask any questions they have regarding the proposal that will be voted on by the membership between August 17th and 31st of this year. We will be offering another webinar on Friday, August 3rd, beginning at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time to discuss the proposal regarding online elections. We are recording this webinar and will have it available online for members who are not able to attend. We ask that you please mute yourself so others do not hear feedback. If you have a question throughout, please raise your hand next to your name or type your question in the chat box. <clears throat> a brief overview of what to expect today. We'll introduce the three presenters, give a short history on the governance task force, the proposals from 2017's annual conference business meeting, and then we'll review the current proposed changes as well as offer an opportunity for members to ask questions of us regarding these proposed changes. We'll also end with some next steps. As I said, my name is Tiffany Gonzalez. I'm currently the president of Glucuho. I am hosted by the University of Illinois at Chicago, where I serve as an assistant director in campus housing. I'll turn it over to my fellow presenters. All right, Michelle's not jumping in. So, hi, I am Jacob Knight. I am the Indiana delegate uh, hosted at Franklin College, where I'm the director of residence life. Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Soika. I am at the University of Cincinnati, where I serve as the assistant director of operations for resident education and development, and I serve as your past president. All right, next slide then, Tiffany. So here's the history lesson. <clears throat> um, so our current proposal was set in motion in 2015. Glucuho President Josh Lawry convened a strategic planning task force. The task force reviewed historical documents and assessment data from the organization. Upon review of all information, the task force recommended several goals to guide our association's work through the 2020 conference. These goals were reviewed by past presidents and the 2014-2015 Glucuho Board of Directors. The board voted to approve the strategic plan on October 19th of 2015. Taking action on this plan in 2016, Glucuho President Paul Habinski appointed a governance task force to review the governance recommendations in the strategic plan and make recommendations to the Glucuho Board. The 2016 Governance Task Force recommended a clear division of the board, adding minimum requirements for holding elected positions in Glucuho, along with several other governance-related updates. These recommendations were reviewed and approved by the Glucuho board at the 2016 annual conference, but they require a bylaw change to take effect. So in 2017, Glucuho President Michelle Soika appointed a new Governance Task Force to write and propose these bylaw changes. This group reviewed the previous task force's recommendations and did some assessment of their own to better understand Glucuho's governance. In the end, they proposed five bylaw changes. These bylaw changes, along with several others, were presented to the Glucuho board who approved them, so they advanced to a membership vote at the annual conference. At the 2017 conference, there was a lengthy question and answer session, followed by a motion to table this conversation until the next quarter. This motion was seconded and the membership approved this motion by a 38 to 20 to 1 vote. We learned a lot from the 2017 proposal. We covered a lot of information in the 30 minutes of presenting and the Q&A that followed. We need to thoroughly cover the changes we think we need to make for the future of our association and help our members understand the implications of these changes. And so that's why you're seeing um, this being presented as webinars and in a whole lot of other formats to help our membership understand what's going on. So instead of bringing the original 2017 governance bylaw proposal forward again as a set, we decided to 
take advantage of our quarterly bylaw revision process to break this proposal into smaller proposals so we can have more focused conversations when we do these presentations. In May, we did our first set of bylaw revisions when we added minimum requirements for the elected positions and updated the timelines for the exhibitor liaison and technology coordinator positions to reflect being appointed a year prior to assuming their duties. Both of these changes were passed. This quarter, there will be two more proposals. The first proposal will shift our election process from an in-person election at the Glacujo Annual Conference to an online election, which occurs in May. Uh, this proposal will be the focus of our webinar next week, so please attend or review the recording if you have any questions. The second proposal is the focus of today's webinar. If this bylaw proposal is approved, the leadership of the association will be more clearly divided into two separate bodies. This proposal also includes the addition of a new elected board member, the committee chair delegate, who will oversee the committee chairs and represent their voice during meetings of the Glucujo, or of the board of directors. If approved, the elected leaders of the association, so the tri-presidents, the secretary, the treasurer, the committee chair delegate, and the state delegates, will be designated as the Board of Directors and continue to fill the duties outlined in Article 9, Section 1 of the bylaws. The ex officio members and committee chairs will be the non-elected leaders appointed by the president with consultation and approval from the Board of Directors with a focus on the operational side of the association. This group will have specialized duties for the association, such as uh, liaisoning with the exhibitors, uh, working with our conference host site, or maintaining the, maintaining the association website. Or they will oversee the activities of members assigned to uh, serve on assigned committees. Since the ex officio members will no longer be required to attend board of director meetings, a new elected board member, the committee chair delegate, will be created to oversee the committee chairs and the assistant committee chairs and represent their voices um, in the board of director meetings. This split will fulfill the vision of the strategic plan by implementing the effective practice of a board of directors composed of elected board members while having appointed positions be more focused on the operational responsibilities of the association. This split should allow each group to be more effective at its delegated role while also reducing the fiscal burden on the association, especially for in-person meetings. I'll turn it over to my fellow presenters now for more details. Thanks, Jacob. We're going to spend some time going through each section of the bylaws to show the changes being proposed. Here you can see Article 6, Elected Officers. Section 1 is the addition of the committee chair delegate position as an elected officer. In the board of, if, in the board of directors being comprised of elected officials, having an elected officer representing the committee would be added and named committee chair delegate. It should be noted that the board of directors proposed and voted in favor of a friendly amendment to change the name from committee chair liaison to committee chair delegate. The role of this person would be to work directly with committee chairs on selection of committee members and all committee related initiatives throughout the year. The committee chair delegate will represent the committees on the Glacujo board. Section 10 is providing guidance for the committee delegate position in relation to the length of their term. And just like other positions, this person can seek re-election after their two years. Currently, the committee chair delegate will be elected at the 2018 business meeting during the annual conference, if this is, if this is approved. We do have a second proposal regarding online elections. If that proposal passes, the committee chair delegate will be included in the online elections along with other elected positions. The text in section 10 and 11 do not change. However, with the addition of section 10, 10 and 11 move to sections 11 and 12. Article 8, elections, includes the addition of the committee chair delegate position to the slate for elected officers. I'll hand this one off to Tiffany. Great, thank you. So moving on to Article 9, our non-voting non -voting board members 
non-voting board members has been changed to the term ex officio members and it, as it has been clarified that the Klikuho board is comprised of elected officers. We continue this throughout the bylaws as you can see highlighted specifically in article 9 sections 2 and 3 where we replace the term of all non-voting non board members to the term ex officio members throughout. Article 9, the duties and membership of the Board of Directors includes removing the work of the committees from the President-elect to the addition of Article 9, Section 8, adding those responsibilities to the Committee Chair Delegate. delegate. The Committee Chair Delegate will coordinate all the work of the committees. Additionally, with the addition of Section 8, Sections 8 through 11 will now be Sections 9 through 12. No text has been changed from these sections. Moving on to Article 10, Committees and Task Forces, we've removed the terminology of voting members as the Glucujo Board will be comprised of only voting members. The term of the voting members is redundant and will be removed. Similarly to Article 10, Article 11, Funding and Expenditures, also removes the term of the elected officers as the board is comprised of elected officers. In looking at the timeline for implementation, in August of this year, the membership will vote on this proposal to edit the Glucujo leadership structure and add the committee chair delegate to the board. The following, again, is the timeline for implementation. So in September 2018, should this pass, we will update all governing documents to include the changes and additions. Glucujo board will also open up nominations for the committee chair delegate position to be elected at the business meeting at the upcoming annual conference in Bloomington, Indiana. The committee chair delegate will be elected and will begin their term immediately following the annual conference until the 2020 conference, as this is a two year term. Looking forward into October 2018, again, this will include the election of the committee chair delegate along with our president elect at the October business meeting. At the close of the upcoming annual conference, the bylaws will be in effect meaning those who are appointed this fall will become ex officio members and the Glucujo board will be comprised of elected officers. Starting in November of 2018, we'll start the transition period slash onboarding period in preparation for the 2019 winter meeting. The tri presidents will work closely with the committee chair delegate to ensure the completion of committee member selection as well as committee chair training. Some of our next steps that we hope uh, you're able to do are to talk with your staff in your department regarding the proposed changes. If you're not the voting delegate, we encourage you to connect with your voting delegate on campus. If you are interested in knowing who that is, please email me, president at glucuha.org, and I'd be more than happy to share that information. If you do have a new voting delegate at your institution, once again, please email me their new email address, and we'll be happy to update our records. Our plan is to send out the link to the voting delegates in mid-August before voting opens and then continue to send reminders until the 31st of August. We also would encourage you to join us on Friday, August 3rd at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time for the next webinar regarding our online elections. I'm happy to open up the floor to any questions people may have. You can write them in the chat if you'd like. And we'll give it about a minute or so in case people are chatting with anyone else on their campus. Okay, so one of the questions I received is about professional development and or opportunities for ex officio members. And so I wanted to throw that out to Michelle and Jacob, if you have any thoughts on um, the involvement or development that our ex officio members will receive. 
Sure, I'll tackle this one first and Jacob, feel free to add anything um, additionally. So um, professional development comes in all forms and certainly serving as a chair or holding a leadership role within the association is um, a lot of valuable professional development in and of the position itself. Um, there will also be great opportunities for professional development in terms of how to work for a regional volunteer association through um, like board meetings, uh, not board meetings, I'm sorry, through meetings with the committee chair delegate on a regular basis. So that's a, an excellent opportunity, which is what our folks are getting right now through serving on the board is how to work um, from a distance, how to interact um, primarily through email and um, phone call conversations. And so those opportunities will likely still exist. It is up to the president on how they want those meetings to evolve, but they would certainly still have those opportunities to connect and to, um, to, to develop as professionals in a different capacity through that role. I think the piece that I would add is, you know, even though um, we're, we're more formally creating this division, I, I think there are going to be times that the ex officio members, um, we want them as part of the conversation for things. And so um, I think that they will still have some of those opportunities, um, you know, because they, they have many different perspectives. And um, I think especially when things are being done in person already, um, you know, there might be chances for that to happen. Um, you know, if there's a, a separate ex officio um, sort of meeting of those leaders, um, I, I think there's gonna be a lot more collaboration that is happening. Um, and, and many of these things are still uh, going to be developed as this position is created and, and sort of figures out what that division looks like. Um, one of the things that I've said all along with uh, understanding the difference between our bylaws and our leadership manual is our bylaws are truly just our governing, like our, our rules for our association, whereas our leadership manual is more like the practices we've developed over time. Um, so those have yet to be sort of laid out and they will be a, a big part of the, the first year or two in this position is, is trying to figure out what does that process look like for this newly elected person. Great, thank you. I'll wait another uh, 30 seconds or so if there are other questions from anyone else on the webinar. Okay, well, seeing none, I wanna thank you for taking the time this afternoon to learn more about the proposed bylaw changes regarding our Glucumbo leadership. We hope this was helpful in understanding a little bit about what the proposal is about and where the association is looking to move forward to. Should you have any questions, please reach out to me at president at glucumbo.org and I'd be more than happy to connect with you. Again, we hope you're able to join us on Friday, August 3rd for our next webinar regarding our online elections. So thank you very much and have a great day.